One of the things that's often discussed in implant dentistry is, are implants safe for patients with diabetes? Now, the most important metric which you need to know, and I hope you're doing a blood test for your patients before your implant surgery, but the most important metric in deciding this is the gold standard, which is HbA1c. This refers to glycosylated hemoglobin. It shows us how good the diabetic control has been for the past two to three months. Why? Because the life cycle of a red blood cell is about 120 days, and this gives us a very useful metric to show how well the patient has been controlling their diabetes. Now, what are the values we should be aware of? Generally, anything below 6% is considered as non-diabetic or pre-diabetic, depending on the lab you use. 6 to 8% is considered fairly good control. 8% to 10% is considered moderate control, and 10% and above is considered poor control of their diabetic status. Now, if you look at all of the systematic reviews and meta-analysis, you will generally arrive at this one conclusion, where well-controlled diabetics, that means the HbA1c is less than 8%, it is safe to do implant dentistry. What happens if it's more than 8%, let's say it's 8.1%? Well, these patients, we tend to see more bleeding on probing, more marginal bone loss, peri-implant mucositis, eventually leading to peri-implantitis, and eventually the failure of the implant is possible as well. You might be testing postprandial blood sugar, you might be testing fasting blood sugar, all of that is not really too relevant because it just shows the control on that particular day. I would say it's much more important to look at HbA1c to give you a broad picture of how well this patient is controlling their diabetes. I hope I've confused you enough. This is the Dental Review Guy signing off with a smile.